Asuka was not aware about the whole Becky Lynch's news until it was presented to her on TV. The little glimpse of her mother, that is all real. Apparently she did a pregnancy test and she did it wrong. So she thought she was not pregnant. Welcome everyone to Ring the Bell, this is DS, and today we have very special guests from RuPaul's Drag Race, James Mansfield. Hi everyone. And we've got Anthony Bowen in the house, all the way from NXT and Impact Wrestling. What's up everybody? So Anthony, who's your favorite female wrestler right now? Honestly, we were just talking about Asuka before, I'm gonna go with Asuka because like I said, she has she's such a well-rounded performer and i was enamored by her when she first came over to nxt and she was empress of tomorrow and she was choking out bailey and she was kicking everyone's ass and now she's <laughs> she's got this like comedy side to her she's dancing around headquarters and still doing it randomly in elevators i think it's funny i, I just like characters like that so i'm gonna go and ask her. so today there's um some interesting news that we have to cover but let's start from money in the bank so money in the bank was super short it was only two hours and 23 minutes long and compared to like Wrestlemania that usually goes like eight hours. This was a breath of fresh air. Apparently this was the shortest pay-per-view event since 2002's Insurrection. Huh. I had that on VHS. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the one in the UK. So Vince McMahon wanted shorter shows until crowd returns because they don't want to like wear out fans watching from home without crowd. What do we think of the shorter pay-per-views? Love them. As a performer, my favorite thing and also most stressful thing is when an independent wrestling show stretches on for hours upon hours upon hours we're all happy fans are happy i love short shows but i also <laughs> probably keep wrestlemania to like a two-night feature i think that is a spectacular idea because then you it opens up all these other possibilities of you can have the men uh main event one night and have the women main event the other night and it just gives more people opportunity because the roster is so big more opportunity for people to shine less of a um a dilemma of going on the main event at wrestlemania eight hours into the show and the crowd's kind of like really tired and they're they're really trying to like come alive for you but it's just exhausting i like shorter shows i absolutely love 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 the short wrestlemania um i I hosted a WrestleMania with the Nobodies in Brooklyn a few years ago. And I actually went into shock because I was in full drag in a corset near that six hour mark. I had to go in shock. Like I couldn't move my leg. You didn't go to the bathroom the entire time? I was in tights. I couldn't. <laughs> never again. Never again. Keep it two nights. I hope you got paid well. No, but it's New York. It's fine. You know that. It's the, it's the East Coast. They don't pay anyone anything. So we have to talk about the man. Becky Lynch. The man's gonna be the mom. Whoa. I'm sure WWE is thrilled about that. <laughs> you know, Vince McMahon was on TV. He was super excited for Becky. I'm excited for her. That's what, <laughs> motherhood's like definitely something to look forward to. Maybe not from a business perspective, but well, actually, no. You can. There's so many ways you can. You can set a 24 crew with her and, and get like, her entire experience of like balancing being the man and being the mother. Take a page out of Lacey Evans' book and take your family on the road with you in an RV. The man made this big news by revealing that in the briefcase, there was no contract, but the women's championship belt all along. So apparently the Money in the Bank match was not for the contract, but it was for the Raw Women's Championship match. So Asuka's a new champion. Am I mistaken? Are the Kabuki Warriors still a thing? <laughs> They're still if, there. If she broke kayfabe and she's a face now, are they, well, I'm confused. I'm kind of excited, especially with Asuka, the face turn again. Like if she keeps up the comedy character, I'm down to see it. Those are always fun. Like the stone cold kind of mentality where they're like the comedy face, but they're also a badass. They'll kick the shit out of you. Well, think of the pop she's going to get when she randomly returns. Wait, what, uh, when's nine months from now? Is that Royal Rumble time? So she said she's expecting in December. This is her interview with People magazine. And she said she always wanted the kids, but she was having a lot of inner struggles because you know, the career, having becoming the man, and also having a kid. It was very Becky Lynch of her because apparently she did a pregnancy test and she did it wrong. So she thought she was not pregnant, but she was like, there's something wrong. So like she did it a couple more times and she is due in December. Yeah, good so for her. Technically, she might've wrestled pregnant 
at WrestleMania. <laughs> My favorite comment on this whole situation, the WWE fans are so shady. Somebody commented, oh my God, now finally Charlotte can get a title opportunity she deserves. Here are some updates from the whole Becky Lynch big announce from, from Raw. Update is that apparently from Money in the Bank ladder match in Stanford, Asuka was not aware of the fact that the briefcase that she got was the one with the championship belt in it. That was not known for anyone. She also did not know about the whole Becky Lynch's news until it was presented to her on TV. The little glimpse of her money Mother, that is all real. That is so cool. I'm so glad that they let her have a real reaction as opposed to like a fabricated one because then it would have just came off as in insincere and fake. But this was like just a great, great moment between two friends that we all got to be a part of. I yeah, loved it. Yeah. It was so genuine and heartwarming and cute. You don't generally get to have that sort of genuine reaction when it comes to wrestling. I think it's sweet. I feel like they are close and friends in real life. So it's kind of like nice that that's how she found out. I thought it was weird how they like found this powerful sentence for her to reveal that she was um, a mom. But then when I thought about it, I was like, they probably had to be very choosy because Asuka only understands, you know, bits and pieces of English. So I think that making sure she said the word mother was key. And then I thought it was cute that it isn't even scripted that Asuka was like, mother? Like she was like making sure she just understood what happened. I loved it. it so, I also so liked cute. too how she just didn't come out and be like, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm and then, yeah, exactly. And I'm going to leave now. So I liked the way that it was all set up. It was mainly yeah. focused on her and her career. There's more news about how she was feeling backstage because obviously she is the champion. She runs the division. She's been running the company. It was said that she was very quiet and backstage. She wasn't very talkative with people. She wasn't beaming about the news. She was very nervous. I think it's just because it's like such a male dominated industry. I feel like there must have been some complex thought going on inside her brain thinking like somewhat of a guilt, but there's also happiness. I think maybe it was more of a like a sigh of relief than some mm. pretty sure she was holding it in like carrying that around and pretty, pretty sure she wanted to tell everybody but she's like ooh finally maybe that's why she was a little bit more quiet and reserved but yeah you're right I mean it, it's kind of hard to like almost give up your spot whenever you're on top but you also you know want to want to have a kid and be a mother too so it's kind of the struggle that women face in everyday lives in any industry that they're in and sometimes a lot of women have to pick either their career over being a mother or the mother over being the career or over the career so it's kind of like cool seeing her kind of do both she had she has had a great career to this point and i don't think her career is over yet but i could see why she would be a little bit more reserved about it than than say for example if it was a dude announcing that their significant other is pregnant so. i kind of feel in a strange way that this moment on television we're seeing was as powerful as when we saw Daniel Bryan have to give up his title due to injury, although having a kid is nothing like due to injury. So if you remember that photo we saw like two or three days after Daniel Bryan had to give it up where he's like black and white and like Brie is checking on him and he's like squatting down, basically crying like he was in the peak of his career. And like Becky Lynch, like she has worked so hard for so long. She is literally history making. She's Becky Two Belts. And it's probably just a little bit like it's bittersweet because she's moving on to something bigger and possibly better. It, I would say it's better. And, but she's like giving up something she worked so hard for. It's like Paloma said, she's probably a little bit like, will I ever get all of this back? Can I ever come back and be as glorious as I was before? And going back into Becky Lynch, it was hard for her to even prove to the WWE headquarters and Vince McMahon. Like when she was on her initial like rise, um, they just cut her off because they didn't like the way she speaks or the way she worked on the mic. And then she had to like start from the bottom and rework her way up. And then she just didn't stop. She kept going. So it's probably, like I said, a little bittersweet. Um, I really feel for her. It's just like Paloma just said, like a woman has to kind of balance what, you know, traditional gender roles for us are with giving up a very physical career. So currently WWE has no timetable for her return. News sites were told that WWE is willing to have her back whenever she wants to. This will be a 
major life change for Becky Lynch and WWE is fully respecting that for her. So that's a very good news. Even they showed Vince McMahon like hugging Becky. Aww. They made sure to put that in there. <laughs> You're like, look, he's human. He likes people. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go through a little bit of how people reacted to uh, Becky Lynch's big news. Nikki said, congratulations, Becky Lynch. I'm so happy for you. And Seth, so proud of everything you have done. Even for us women, you are forever our GOAT. I have chills for you for this next journey of life. It is truly magical. Nothing like last kicking mommy. Nikki and Brie, they're due in, I think they're due in like July or so this summer. They're all pregnant together. That's kind of fun. It's gonna Brie. be a good year for wrestle babies. <laughs> We're gonna have a new series. You know how like Muppet Babies was a series? It's gonna be wrestle babies. It's gonna be like the off spin of a total divas. And this is gonna be all the babies. Total babies. <laughs> Probably. Oh my God, that's such a good idea. Isn't there like a show like a dancing mom? There should be like a wrestling mom's. Yeah. Yeah. This show is the babies fight each other. <laughs> Like a baby fight club. Oh my god. <laughs> Shayna should be like a general manager of that party. <laughs> that kid sucks. Brie Bella said, Wow, goosebumps. Welcome to Mommy Club. It's a great club to be part of. Peyton Roy said, I'm not crying. You're crying. You. Mia Yim said, Whoa, congrats. Charlotte Flair is like, Congratulations, Bex. Beyond happy for both of you. Natalia, the protector of the motherhood, said, So happy for you. Alexa Bliss said, Said, congrats. <laughs> <laughs> this had a very similar energy to when Marie said congrats to Mellow Twins pregnancy. Congrats. Thanks for dropping the news on our premiere date. Mickey James said, you will never know a stronger love. One truly worth fighting for. I'm so happy for you. Kyrie Sane said, congratulations. I will never forget your kindness from that time. Oh, so she's talking about some specific time. Hmm. Bailey said proud. She's a heel, so she can't talk much. Carmella said, wow, so happy for you, Becky Lynch. Congratulations. All these sound like what people write on your yearbook. <laughs> like at the end of the year when you ask people Keep to write your yearbook. <laughs> Never change. That's what these sound like. <laughs> when secretly, they're all just like, now it's my turn. <laughs> hey, it's all about sisterhood now. Now there's room for another redhead in wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> and the half redhead too. Paloma Star. Even though my black is taking over That's my not a huge swoop, guys. That's just a room. That, this is my gross coming in. <laughs> like your swoop is like this. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it on purpose, guys. Yeah, I'm so happy for Becky. It's like Becky Lynch is very special for me, at least. Like, because we started this channel in that SummerSlam that Becky turned heel. That was like the start of the man character. I don't know. I feel like there is something, some connection with me and Becky Lynch. Ring the bell and Becky Lynch. I hope she comes back, but I also, I also am super happy for her. Me too. I mean, I'm very happy for her. And I think it's awesome to see that like women can be both. Like you don't just have to be like, you can't just be a wrestler. You can't just be a mom. You could actually be both. I mean, there's a lot of women on the roster right now who are moms. Uh, so I think it's really cool to do it. And like, it's crazy because I have like Shimmer Volumes 1 and 2 when Rebecca Knox is on the cover oh. of it. So like, I've been like keeping up with Becky since back in the day. So I think it's awesome to see her all oh, grown up. I think it's important to say congratulations to Becky a lot. We should also rightfully say congratulations to Seth, although it's not fair that he had to give up everything he worked for <laughs> to push this human from his loins. But congrats to both of you. I love that how Seth's new character is like someone who just lost it. <laughs> Yeah, he was. He looked disheveled. He looked like he just found out his girlfriend was pregnant or something. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel a little bit bad because right now Becky's being showered with love, but because he's like a heel, he can't really be like, he can't break that. You know what I mean? He has to stay. I don't know. I just feel bad because he probably wants to be like the Miz was and like, this is my beautiful soon to be wife. And she's gorgeous. And she's like, the epitome of womanhood because she's bearing my child, but he can't. So I do feel a little bad for him that way. The next news, guess what's back in WWE? It's called the crossover rule, AKA the wild card rule. <laughs> it's back with a new name. <laughs> What Has it been you? utilized? Well, it's been utilized. I'm excited. <laughs> Full force starting this week. So Charlotte's going to be on SmackDown. Alexa and Nikki were on Raw. Stepping out of the performer role and into a complete fan mode. 
I love the original first draft because it really, like in 2002, it felt like it was two separate teams. Anytime there was a Raw versus SmackDown event, I was extra engaged. Or anytime somebody invaded SmackDown, I was like, "Oh my God, what's happening?" And I feel like the it's it's they do it every other month. <laughs> I'd rather have Raw as its own thing and SmackDown as its own thing, and, and no crisscrossing. They have a roster now where they could actually do that, where they have a separate brand and make them all mean something. Because I like that too, because everyone got their own opportunity to shine. It wasn't constantly like someone else from another show being shoved down your throat. I showed they're not even on. Like Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose, them shining on SmackDown, that would have been happening if the roster was merged together. I hope it is temporary because right now with the whole quarantine going on, I think they might be having some issues pulling talents into come wrestle. So I feel like that might be one of the factors of this happening. It might be just a product of the times where they're forced to do it and they really didn't have original plans to do that in the first place. But this, because of, I guess the lack of travel bringing in certain superstars like you said it might be harder for them to to have star power on each show all right so earlier this week all the news was all about becky lynch but now some other news are trickling in so we brought moxie and joey to talk about all those news so let's first talk about aew's double or nothing confirmed match i will tell you about it i'm very excited for it because it's finally hikaru shida number one contender getting her shot against nyla rose and these two, I think, are going to actually be able to put on a show, kind of like I anticipated Statlander and Nyla to be, but Statlander was sick. I think these two are going to come out and put on one of the best matches we've seen from AEW's women's division. I agree with everything you're saying. Like, we've seen way too much now with Nyla Rose that it's the smaller competitor chopping down the big tree. But no matter the fact that Hikaru Shida is quite small in stature compared to Nyla Rose. She is mighty in her moveset, in her kicks, in her presence. And if this were even real life, like shoot wrestling, I feel like Hikaru Shida could give Nyla Rose a run for her money. So I'm mm -hmm. really excited for this. Now, after this past week's promo, I'm a little less, I'm a little deflated, but <laughs> we'll get to that in the review. You know, it's actually pretty cool that AEW in a small amount of time built their women's division to have so many credible number one contenders like Hikaru Shida, obviously great. Britt Baker, who's explosive dentist. We have Chris, we have Big Swole. They're actually doing a really good job. They're doing a good job of pushing who they have to now, which it's kind of night and day um, from this year to last year from what we got from AEW because from its inception all the way up until probably like three months ago, the AEW's women's division was brutal. <laughs> That's really amazing to hear. So the AEW's Double or Nothing is happening next Saturday, which is May 23rd. So exciting, exciting. Let's talk about NXT TakeOver. Tell us about it. It's going to be in your house. In my house. <laughs> I also liked how the artwork for it gave me lots of 90s vibes. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing if they're going to do kind of like specialty matches that they've been doing for all the other pay-per-views. Because if you put like Triple H and Shawn Michaels in charge of <laughs> making whatever's going to be the specialty matches, it's going to be insane. I haven't watched it before, but In Your House is like an old pay-per-view. Apparently it's a 25th anniversary of WWE's first In Your House event. What, what's so different about this? the show solely i think nostalgia that's okay. literally it yeah like, there wasn't anything that was particularly like special about in your house it's just something that people kind of grew up with so it's cool to see them bring it back in a new way and now it actually has meaning because it's like in your house oh my god i really hope they go to because you know how like candace and johnny gargano they're probably like filming in their house the whole dinner yeah scene. okay so maybe they could actually go to houses and have matches there throw back to jeff jarrett in china it would finally be an actual good housekeeping match <laughs> it also would make sense because if you watch the shows um quite a few uh, wrestlers are giving promos or reviews or opinions on Raw, SmackDown, and NXT from camera phones in their homes. So it'd make a lot of sense. Let's talk about Impact Wrestling for a little bit. They have some big name signs. So first of all, they re-signed Sue Young, 
and Susie. Wink, wink. They signed both of them. They've been on the market for a little bit. People were thinking if they should go to AW or not, but you know, they went back to Impact. And we've got Tasha Steeles from NWA join Impact Wrestling. Well, I don't know much about Tasha Steeles. I haven't seen much of her work, but I'm excited for some fresh faces in the Impact division. I know Sue Young from way back in the day. I got stories. I love her and Rich Swan. They're some of my favorite people to travel with. Legit, I kind of was hoping to see Sue pop up in AEW, I thought it was a good chance for her to really jump up onto a higher platform. You know, to go back into Impact and have baller matches like she has been having for the past year or so now, I'm down for that. I do think that these are good additions to the talent they have been signing recently. Signing people like Kylie Ray even is like really bringing it. Kylie Ray, Tessa Blanchard, Jordan Grace, Yes. Beautiful lady. They like the talent they're signing is making the Nakasa vision prevalent again. And so I think it's really nice to see these additions to that as well. And Impact Wrestling has been very, uh, very good to wrestlers. They're letting them wrestle everywhere else, work in other promotions. So they're giving a lot more freedom to them. They also do have a lot of creative control on TV. So it's a really fun division. So I'm really excited about Impact in general. And shout out if you guys haven't watched Havoc versus Kimberly yet, go watch it. I love that match. There is another WWE release that was announced. It is Rachel Evers, also known as Rachel Erling. So she was in Mae Young Classic and she was signed in January 2019. She's been out of action since July of 2019 because ACL injury. She kind of had the run of it for her NXT thing because she made so many appearances and then her dad gets brought back to be with Authors of Pain. Then she gets more appearances. Then she does Mae Young Classic, they finally sign her, they don't really put her on TV, then they release her. She had all of her opportunities before she was even signed. She was also the one that created VXT, kind of went sidelined when she got injured and then Deanna got released and everything, so you know. She posted this video using her real name, Rachel Erling. Don't call it a comeback. I don't know what that means, but sounds really cool. I think that the sky is the limit for her, honestly. She's one of the nicest people I ever met. Cool story about the first time I met her, I was doing backstage correspondence work while I was out with a few concussions, and she was backstage, and I didn't know who she was. Diamante, uh, who was Angel Rose on the Indies, um, was shooting a promo with me. I was doing an interview spot and I needed someone for her to just throw against a wall. So I just found a girl that was backstage. I'm like, hey, would you like to do this? And she was like, yeah, sure, no problem. And then the next week, I literally see her on NXT and I'm like, oh, this girl was so humble and nice. Like, I didn't know she was a big star. How dare you? Just kidding. I had no idea. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to NXT anyway. So you guys talked extensively about this in your review, but just to give our news and rumor people a little update, Jake Atlas Finisher, we did mention that they kind of scrapped the name of it. The original name was LGBDDT, which is pretty mouthful. And now they're naming it Rainbow DDT. Nails these with a Rainbow DDT! Yeah. What was your brief thoughts on that? I thought of Skittles. <laughs> what I think is important is because male superstars in the WWE have kind of hidden their LGBTQ, you know, selves for so long, I just think it's important to start that representation. And I think there is such, for some reason, still like a negative stigma behind that. I think they want people to fall in love with Jake Atlas before they let him come out per se. I think for what it is, Rainbow DDT is loads better than LGB, LGBT. Yeah. Because I can't even say it right now. I can't imagine Morrow just like, LGBT. <laughs> oh no, I totally agree. Like I even saw some people on Twitter, like gay guys who was talking about, oh, Jake Atlas must be having a time of his life, like touching Tony's butt. And I'm just like, guys, really? I no lie, have been in the ring with very attractive men. You know, guys, six pack, oiled up, stacked. And yes, they're attractive, but when you're out there competing and you're putting on a show, you're not turned on. You're just not. I used to do a stand up bit about this where people were like, don't you get turned on by all these hot, sweaty guys? I'm like, well, you know what? Let me go ahead and show you exactly what it's like. So I just hit them with a chair and then go, are you toned down right now? Are you feeling good about yourself? Like, you're just not. You're in a different mindset. Yeah. You know, I like that WWE's putting that gay knot in there. They're not necessarily making him into the gay wrestler, but you know, it's putting it out there. He himself is very outspoken about him being gay and he's a big advocate. But you know, people who haven't followed him on social media or his indie 
career wouldn't necessarily know about that. So I do like that they're putting it in there. I like that they're throwing it in. They just don't need to make that all of him. Yeah, totally. What you do in a bedroom is not who you are as a person. Like, gay isn't a character choice. It's your sexuality. I do it hey. outside a bedroom too, Joey. Okay, DS, it's fine. <laughs> it's called love. Let me show you what love is. Let me show you oh how to move your body. Anyway, uh, Joey, do you want to talk about CZW? Just for people who are not as familiar, CZW is a combat zone wrestling, an independent wrestling company famous for a very hardcore style of matches. So if no one's caught up on this entire CZW drama, basically they're releasing old women's matches under the title of Top Heavy and Tough. What does that mean? Big boobs. Big uh, Big boobs. Yeah. Big and tough. I'm not going to knock anybody for having that be who they are. Like if you're out there making, you know, material that is adult intended or sexualized, fine. But these women- <laughs> This is a PG show. <laughs> I was not looking at your part of the screen. Anyway, <laughs> it's got like Leva and Lufisto and all these women who are legitimate competitors in the ring. This isn't meant to be sexualized. It's meant to be women's wrestling. And I believe Paloma said something about the fact that Lufisto is actually looking to take legal action against them. CCW Combat Zone Wrestling has been promoting us as softcore porn actresses. I am a professional wrestler. I am not a cat fighter. I am not a sweaty girl getting involved in dirty fights. And although, yes, I am top heavy and a very proud bottom heavy girl, nothing gives them the right to promote me as such. When I did contact CCW about the issue, I was told that the footage was sold to a third party that wanted to promote us as such. Your name is on the brand, so don't give me a bullshit answer that you can't do nothing about this. Combat Zone Wrestling is where I grew up as a competitor and where intergender wrestling was taken seriously. This is where I've been the first woman to enter the cage of death. It is also where I've won the CCW Iron Man Championship. Well, the fact that a promotion we put our trust in is actually promoting us as such is not helping. You are part of the problem. To all the women wrestlers working for WSU or CCW, just be aware that they don't give a shit about you as a professional athlete as long as they can sell your ass and your the last news, we have some interesting WWE and reality show collaboration going on. There will be a MasterChef Junior episode about WWE. So there will be a WWE themed episode with talented kids who will be making WWE themed food. <laughs> yeah, and there might be some interaction with Gordon Ramsay and wrestlers smack talking each other Ooh, that's, that'll be fun that's a great idea promo battle i hope they like have to create like old sponsor like food that they had in their past like they all have to like make chef boyardee gourmet or something <laughs> the wwf new york original menu yes! oh but you know i still think the best reality show and wwe collaboration is the project runaway have you seen that episode no oh. I remember that and they were being so shady to Tori Wilson. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. It's like amazing, but also like you hate that they kind of like make fun of them. At the end of her last post, she did like a super sexy move. Michael Kors just lost it. And it was like during the diva era too. So it was very easy for people to like just pull shots at them. It's a fun episode. Anyway, that is this week's news and rumor. Thank you so much for joining. But Anthony, where can we all find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Bones underscore official. If you'd like to see some daily vlogs, challenges, parodies, comedy, laugh your ass off. Check out my boyfriend and I's YouTube channel, which is Michael and Anthony. I can be on it, James Bansfield with a Y, James with a Y on YouTube. We're almost to 100K. Yes. Also, James Mansfield on Instagram is yes. Can I just invade your show for a second and ask you a question? Okay, Anthony, calling back to our question for the beginning of this episode. Sure. Who is your absolute favorite independent manager who also is a drag queen and is drop dead gorgeous? James Mansfield. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great answer. Oh my gosh. Oh, it means so much. Okay, yes, your turn. I have to see you manage Anthony sometimes. That'll be fun. Are you a baby face, Anthony? 
Yes, I am. Oh, it's not going to work out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I only work with the bad boys. Well, when I turn you, I'll give you a call. And you can find me at DSN and Ring the Bell DS on Twitter. And bye.